don't preach with my shoulder, I preach with my head, in my heart, I hope. And uh, so I won't shake hands with you, though, because any sudden movement is literally murder. And I don't think I want to be murdered this morning, <coughs> particularly. Now, the announcements are simple, Wednesday night, 7.30, and uh, Brother Roger Smith is going to be a Brother Paul Bird. This will be interesting to folk from Buffalo and uh, Niagara and through St. Catharines. He'll be there on June the uh, 5th. If I got my dates right, he'll be coming in next Saturday, which is June the 4th, and also preaching on Thursday night, and also preaching the 11th. And as far as I know, he'll be down here uh, bringing us a service a week from this Wednesday. So we'll have Roger preaching. So I want you to get your dates cleared and put everything aside to be able to come to hear Roger. He's an excellent preacher. He's one of our favorites without a doubt. And then, of course, we're back to services again on Sunday, be 10.30 as usual. <coughs> and um, I think that pretty well covers uh, all the announcements at this time. And, of course, we have the dedication of uh, Rachel Michelle Lyons, a uh, little girl. And so if we have the uh, parents of the baby and grandparents, how many grandparents we got? One set? I've got two sets. I'm going to stand around here to my left, and so you come around here so we get you on camera. <coughs> we want to get, be sure to get this little film clip for you. And uh, let's just bow your heads and we'll word of prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, at this time, the dedication of sleep of the baby, we ask the Lord to give meaning to it in a way that everything in this life has a meaning, everything has a type, everything is a shadow. We're getting more and more. Uh, closely united to the reality because it's at hand now. We pray there for this will be more than just a little dedication service. It will be something that is typical and therefore richly blessed within that thought. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, uh, first of all, we're going to just take a little look at the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 19 here, and uh, verses uh, 13 to 15. And then there were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and departed thence. Now, you notice it doesn't say they brought little boys, and it doesn't say they brought little girls. It just says children which, of course, are both boys and girls. So what the parents did was to consciously and rightly do that which was in their hearts to do, which would be good for the children, to bring them to the Lord. And, of course, they assumed responsibility to helping those children grow up in the way they ought to, even as we see the virtuous women of the Old Testament, Hannah, and different ones of like kind. Now, <clears throat> as we go along, we have to realize in this age, because the pendulum has swung so far with women, uh, and always women have never had the place that, uh, you know, in people's lives that perhaps they should have with the respect and love and those things. It seems women are kind of put down, and uh, seems when the first child is born, it always should be a boy. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean the first child should be a boy. That's up to God. So we have little girls come along, and uh, as I say in this message, too, there's been a little bit too much of a swing against the ladies because of the feminist movement and things, and, uh, and we don't particularly like that. And I want to bring to your attention that, that God did not frown upon women. In fact, you'll notice that the time he changed Abram's name to Abraham, he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. And you know, at that particular time, it was both Sarah and Abraham who ministered to God. And they were the ones that got the calf and dressed it and presented meat to the Lord in a human form. And that was the time, of course, that uh, you, we refer today as Hebrews 13 and 8. <clears throat> so we see that God appeared not only to Abraham, but to Sarah. And it was a joint communication that uh, they were both looked upon as prime sources of God's blessing uh, to them and God's blessing through them to the world. And then again, we find in the book of Mark, the first chapter, Peter's mother was sick and when she was healed, 
she rose and ministered to Jesus and to the brethren. And in Luke 8, there are three women mentioned who ministered of their substance. And then in Luke 10, Martha became a little bit too zealous in the ministry, uh, which she was performing, <clears throat> and uh, that became her priorities. And so the Lord corrected her, and as soon as she corrected, she uh, did the right thing. And you'll notice, at the time of Lazarus' death, she was the one that had faith uh, in Christ, uh, not Mary. It was Martha that said, even now, whatever you say will come to pass. And so today, we see a corrected church, which is represented by a woman, a little sister, as it were, a sister that's, that's uh, uh, representing the church. And so we just take little Rachel Michelle this morning and just sort of make her a type of... Uh, of the newborn bride, because Brother Branham mentioned in 1955 when all those stars came into confluence, he said, he said that it is the birth of, of a new church. <clears throat> so we look today at the dedication of our little sisters as something very, very important, because it is the female, uh, well, I don't care what her age is, is going to represent the church. And it is the, the sisters under a subjection of the word. Now, not that the man isn't. He's much more under subjection that word than, than, than she is. But she's the one under subjection that learns the word and is the type uh, of this hour wherein we have by uh, the goodness of Almighty God a restored church, a truly informed church, and we are growing up into our adulthood in Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> so, <clears throat> with just those thoughts in mind, we want little Rachel Michelle Lyons' dedication to God remind us of what the prophet said. If God ever sends his power into the church, and of course that's Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, it will only be by grace and not by works. Now this little baby had nothing to do with her birth. No baby does. It's a matter of the outside life that was imparted in order to bring forth in the proper order. So today the church by grace knows that what God has done for us in this hour and is doing to get the dead out of the graves and put us into immortality and into a resurrection is absolutely the something that God himself has done. So we look at little baby and we see this here. Beautiful little child. In fact, I, I kind of say this as a little bit of a jest, you know. I think maybe sometime people come through here and they agree with me that we have the most beautiful babies in the world. I just think maybe one day the, the FBI is going to knock on the door and say, hey, there's a lot of kidnappers in your church because we see your women, they rush in and grab the prettiest baby and walk out with it. And uh, I don't think that's really the truth. <clears throat> I just wouldn't be surprised if that happened, if somebody said, hey, I think they've got some baby nappers around here. I just think the little kids growing up and uh, just last night, you see two babies like the two uh, former Graham girls. How about that? That's a nice name, four former Graham girls. We see little uh, <clears throat> Bo there. He's very calm and very sweet looking and nice little baby. And, 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 and see little Abby, and I look at her and grin and just say one word, and she's all a glow of smile. She's just Miss Personality from out of this world. <clears throat> all the babies so beautiful. And so we have another beautiful baby to dedicate. I love that. And uh, commend her to uh, her parents and grandparents. Ha ha. All of them are going to be lionses. Everyone, the grandchildren, and the other grandparents are there. Well, that's all right. So let's just dedicate this week to the baby. In the name of the Lord, you can count on me. See, I can take her without, without hurting her and her. <laughs> Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bring this lovely little child to you this morning, little newborn baby, the fruit of our brother and sister, David and Heidi, and uh, we thank you for her and just commend her in your grace, uh, little uh, Michelle here, which we know that that's a beautiful little name given to her, Rachel being the one from the Bible. So, Rachel Michelle, we just commend you to the Lord Jesus Christ, his care and his love. And we just pray now that the parents will be given the wisdom, the strength, and all that which is necessary to bring her up in the way she ought to go. Lord, let her be like the church that was born, in, as Brother Branagh said, a newborn church in 1955. Just amazing grace. That's all we ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray now. Well, my brother, we give her back to you and your, your mama there. <coughs> And to know that you'll bring her up the way she ought to be brought up, which is good spiritual food and good physical. The Lord bless you. I can shake my hand a little bit, but keep it just in the right position. Okay, Grandma. Been looking so bright. Grandpa, look at these guys scintillate. You almost think that, you know, goodbye. <coughs>
already have turkey and chicken, and hot dogs, and hamburger already. So don't worry if you don't have anything because we've got it all over there already. If you want to bring anything, just bring side dishes, you know, and drinks, and that's all you have to worry about. And a lawn chair, unless you want to sit on the ground. That's all, like Provel said. So we try to probably get started around noon, but everybody is welcome. And uh, if anybody says, well, they don't have anything, you just grab them by the arm and twist it and tell them to come on anyway, because we don't accept that kind of uh, thing, that you can't come because of that. So. I want to sing a little chorus that we've learned. It's from Micah 6 and 8. He hath shown thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. <clears throat> it's taken out of Micah 6 and 8. He hath shown thee, O man. the Holy Ghost, we will know it in a spiritual way as never before. And we mean, Lord, by that, that your prophet brought this message on me to be shown with the earthly bride, and by that spirit that was in him, that led him to tell us these things and led him to believe them, and actually much of it enacted out in his life. 
that we too have a part of it to enact out in our lives, Lord, because it's evolved upon us in this end time. As a lasting people, Lord, to know these things and really in many ways to literally experience them. So help us to know this word this morning, Lord, in a way we've not known it before because we need it so desperately. I will give you the praise in Jesus. Last night, we were looking at the prodigal practiced among the kings in the New Jerusalem. And the foremost ceremonial rite was celebrating the perfect peace of New Jerusalem. The true healing, which was the healing of the natures of all, so there was no discord and therefore no interruptions or disruptions. And we can see what that was like in uh, paragraph uh, 200 and, well, let me see, we've got to get over here a little further. <clears throat> paragraph 59, I mean page 59, and the paragraph 272. Now, Brother Branham, in 271, the last line, he said, speaking uh, this uh, tree of life uh, was only for the true overcomers. And, of course, we know who they were. They're the ones that never gave way to what is known as orthodoxy which is what is accepted by people in general. The true bride of Christ is never a generalized people. They're anything but. They're not even peripheral, because peripheral would be a satellite. We're a satellite of nothing. The kingdom of God is not a satellite to anything, period. It is the sum total substance of everything Anything else could be, perhaps, I doubt, a satellite. It certainly would be peripheral, outside the very circumference. Now, he said the leaves of this tree of life will be for the healing of the nations. That is, the kings that live in there bringing their honor in. When they bring their honor in and lay it before the throne of God, just like the outside, the eleven tribes brought in every one of them a tenth of Levi. They brought the first fruits and things like that, see, to honor and when they bring your honor into that blessed land, then they'll reach for the tree of life, break off a leaf of the tree of life, and they'll walk out together. There's no more war. Everything's at peace. The leaves are a memorial for the healing of the nations. Now, he goes on. He says, now like Adam, there was a tree of life in the Garden of Eden that he might have eaten from. He had every right to at the time if he had not fallen. And, of course, he wanted it after that. That tree of life reminded him all the time his youth was continually going on. Now, of course, that's before he fell. Uh, he looked at the tree of life and knew that his life was going on because he was uh, one with it. And, of course, now the real tree of life in the, uh, in the uh, New Jerusalem <coughs> is going to be there, and it's symbolical to us. And we look at it and know that were sustained by it. Now, you see, the tree itself has got to be symbolical because it represents God. We're not sustained by any tree. We're sustained by the true tree of life, which is God himself. <clears throat> you see? And, all right, the tree of life reminds his youth going on. It's same with the nations. The leaves will be for the healing of the nations. Uh, notice, not the sickness now. He'd have the same rights that Adam did, like the dove, <coughs> with the holly. Now, it's not a holly. Brother Branham uses that word holly, and I don't know just why, except holly is a is a green leaf, and perhaps the uh, fact of the holly leaf being a, a sticky type of leaf, with a little prickle point on it, it may uh, signify the suffering of Christ. I don't know. It was an olive leaf that was plucked off, and olive signifies, signifies peace and victory. However, <clears throat> the idea is the plucking off of the leaf is a ceremonial rite. It's a type of prodigal that they practiced. And this was very accessible to the people. Now, uh, I want to try to bring us uh, 
from the beginning of the first church age to the last church age, where we are now, just ready to go into the millennium. And so I want to go through about six, seven pages of notes here <clears throat> and uh, talk in depth, not so deep, but fully, concerning what I've got in mind, because we should be at this time meeting as a bride church certain uh, prodigal, you might say, a certain, it's more than that, it's a certain type of life. Now, so all right, Brother Branham had to take this subject of the New Jerusalem because for the first time since Paul, there is an elect people who are identified by a prophet as to be Zion bred and born and were tutored and know that they've been identified by God and they in turn have identified themselves with God. Now, if you understand, Brother Branham said, if Ephesus must come again. Now, I didn't know he'd said that except in my subconscious when I preached on it several years ago. He said, Alpha being Omega, you had to come back where the church broke off. It has to come back to originality. That's what a restoration is all about. As Brother Branham said, you've got to go back to Pentecost. And when you're going back to Pentecost, you're going back all the way where God had headship in the church. And remember, under Paul, when he came to the Gentiles, there was perfect headship. <clears throat> all right, so Brother Branham had to take this study of the New Jerusalem because for the first time since Paul, there is an elect people who are identified by a prophet as to be Zion, bred and born, and were tutored, and know that they have been identified by God himself, and they in turn have identified themselves with God. Now just take that statement flat because it's a flat statement. Mm -hmm. They knew uh, <clears throat> the hour in which they lived. Now, in other words, we could say that these people, they literally know the hour. We'll just go back as though that they are presently living and we're talking about them. They know the hour in which they live, that people that have been God identified. And they know the deep secrets of God, especially the secrets of the resurrection hour <clears throat> and the rapture, uh, which depends on the Elijah restoration of Malachi 4, 5, and 6 and Acts 3, 19. Now, they knew back there that something was coming, but they didn't know what we know. But we know now that there's going to be a restoration in this bride from which those bride fell to bring us back <clears throat> to where God can come down, take us away in a rapture, and establish his kingdom on earth. Now, you look at that in Malachi, the fourth chapter, five and six. For behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dead for day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to children and the hearts of children back to the fathers. Now, the first part was done under John. So he's going to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers, lest I come and smite during the curse. <clears throat> now, the point is he's going to come and smite anyway. Mm -hmm. This is not going to stop him smiting. This only is as the days of Abraham, when he said, Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he said, No, I never have and I never will. Now, the first part of the fourth chapter, For behold, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, all the new eagles shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall neither need them root nor branch. But unto you is a different story. That fear my name shall the Son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall have a unique part in the destruction of which I will wreak upon the people. You're going to come back and walk on their ashes. Amen. Revelation chapter 19. Amen. <clears throat> so, the bride of this hour knows that this is about to happen, and there is a restoration going on concerning New Jerusalem, because we're a part of that New Jerusalem. The proof of what I say, based on Brother Brown's message, is Ephesians chapter 1 to chapter 2, to verse 10. <clears throat> We've got a lot of reading to do, and we'll just get through in the 
and I'm sure in the, in the time allotted to us. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, for in he has made accept in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his but the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of grace, wherein he is abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Why he's doing this whole thing? According to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Didn't ask anybody about it. That, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that's when the church ages have run out, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Now, animals don't get into him. They wait upon us. So these are, these are the saints. This is New Jerusalem. In whom also we have obtained that inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. You're not only to be in Christ, but you're going to be part of New Jerusalem. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you received that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, the purchase of possession, under the praise of his glory. The Holy Ghost says it's all yours. It's given so you can get it. Wherefore, also, after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks you make mention of my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. The eyes you understand, and being alike, you may know what his hope is calling, and what the riches of glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding grace of power to us to believe, according to the words of mighty power, which he wrought in Christ and raised from the dead, and set in his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion, and every name this name, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come. And put all things under his feet, and gain and behead over all the new church, which is his body, the fruit of the all in all. And you, who were dead in trespasses and sins, the very ones that were to get all of this, <clears throat> in the very plan of Almighty God, are dead in trespasses and sins. Watch. Where in the time past you walked, according to the course of this world, cause most under any, according to the prince of the power of the earth, that's Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that will not listen to the messenger of God. That's where John was. Even to the disobedient. And the word disobedient in there, <clears throat> John came to them. It was not literal acts of disobedience, as though they wouldn't obey. It was they didn't know. But you notice, those he came to received. And there was a mixed multitude. And those that would receive, came against him. Now these are that people. Among whom also you had your behavior in time past the lust of our flesh, we had lust of our flesh, fulfilling all the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as us. Now it says in your natural form you were a child of wrath. <clears throat> a child of God in a depraved condition. See? But God is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ, by grace you saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly place in, in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Now you notice something here? He puts a heavy responsibility upon us. As though we are we had done this to ourselves. Now you see, you're not obligated for Adam's sin. You're obligated for your own sin. Amen. And there's notice what he says here. For by grace you saved you faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now there's an ordained walk of a child of God who was living in sin, but is now born again. And there's an ordained and predestinated city, or an eternal uh, area, <clears throat> that God is given to us. Now, <clears throat> I read it all. Now notice, in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, in whom also you trusted, after you heard the word of truth, you couldn't do it before, the gospel of your salvation. There's lots of words, and lots of things may sound true, but only the revealed word, vindicated, brings forth salvation. 
In whom also after ye believe, that ye believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, the down payment, the token of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchase possession <clears throat> through the praise of his grace. Now, one verses 113, 14, which I read, brings the Ephesian church right to the resurrection hour as they are identified with it. And it says, earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession. There is no way that you can possibly be in New Jerusalem <clears throat> unless you come this way. But when you come this way, you are guaranteed that you'll be in New Jerusalem. Now, so we notice here then that verses 13, 14 brings the Ephesian age church right to the resurrection hour as they are identified with it. 13 and 14. He said, you're already born again. You're baptized Holy Ghost. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> verses 15 to 16 <clears throat> is the interim period between that church at that time and whenever 17 comes into being. Let's read it. Wherefore also, after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, love us, love and all saints, cease not to give thanks to make mention of our prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, be given to the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. <clears throat> so, all right. The baptism with the Holy Ghost holds good and is good for the redemption of the body to all seven church ages. See? And everybody is identified with the baptism with the Holy Ghost until there comes a time when you become identified with this spirit. Now, that does not put away 14, 13 and 14. Without 13 and 14, you'd never recognize 17. Amen. You couldn't have it. <clears throat> no way. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, all right. For a solid seven church ages, you get verses 13 and 14 and right down to where you come to 17 which is at the very end time. <clears throat> All right. Right to the hour, to the verses 15, 17, 16, which is the interim of the gathering of the saints of all six church ages, actually into the seventh, that bring us to the end of the seventh age, which is verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now, why at the end of, verse, of the seventh? Why does that bring us to the end of the age? Because there's nothing past the resurrection which takes place contingent to and because of verse 17. See? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that takes you right to the rapture. To the 17th verse, where the seventh seal and the seven thunders bring Christ down to earth with another prophet declaring the revelation and knowledge of God, even as Paul, by make and therefore making another Ephesus. <clears throat> See? Now, look, let's face it. Paul the Apostle says here, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being light, that you may know what is hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, that's already been told you here. It's waiting for you. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? That's up there in verse 14. According to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ and he raised from the dead. <clears throat> now, everybody's going to get that that's born again. Mm -hmm. But here's a church that's waiting for that power to come to do that redeeming. And it is not something that is automatic. It's not God running the course of seven churches. All right, now, fine, it's time to do something about the whole thing. Last one's it. Hogwash. That's not what it says, and don't you ever believe it. Every theologian worth a grain of salt knows positively something is going to come, but they don't know what it is. <clears throat> only, the, only a prophet can know. And it said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him in his own right hand, and he placed him. Now that was the power of the resurrection that ended in a rapture. You cannot have a, you cannot have a resurrection without a rapture. You can't do it. No way. The Bible's full of raptures, resurrections. All right. Now, Paul 
the apostle was the one that mentioned this mighty power that has to do with this mighty revelation by the Spirit. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and begin to see what we're talking about here. <clears throat> to know there's only one way it can come. And I, brethren, in verse 1, I came unto you, came not with excellent speech of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. That's the same thing as verse 17. For I determined not to do anything among you save Christ and Him crucified. That won't work. That won't work. That's not what it says here. So you can't preach that. So the church that thinks it can preach Christ and Him crucified and get verse 17 doesn't know what it's talking about. Because it's not going to get it. Because this is the gathering in of all that has been justified through the cross. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's keep on reading. I was with you in fear and trembling. Weakness and fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. All right, now what is the demonstration of spirit and power going to be in our time? It's going to be resurrection. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How be we speak the wisdom uh, that among them that are perfect, those that understand the things of God, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world, that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God and the mystery of the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world under our glory, which none of the princes knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now what do you think they're going to do with this when they don't know it? Crucify again the Son of God afresh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now I'm trying to bring out here that the Apostle Paul said, I did not come to you and simply with the precept say, hey, this is it. He said, I proved what is it. Now, you know that to be the truth. Amen. Because he said so. And that's exactly true. Again, look what he says over here in Galatians. <clears throat> he tells him. He said, now, uh, verse 6, I marvel your soul soon removed from him that called you in the grace of Christ under another gospel. He said, I marvel. He said, you left me for somebody else's teaching. Another gospel. A source of good news, which is not good news at all. But there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than which I have already preached, that person must be accursed. As I said before, I'm going to say again to you, Galatians, <coughs> if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than what you receive, let him be accursed. Do I now seek to persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? If I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which you preach to me is not after man. Neither I received it by any man, neither was I taught of any man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ, he did it himself. <clears throat> and he tells them that when he came to them, he came with the living dynamic proof. All right, you'd have to have the same thing today because God cannot fail. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all anybody's got to do is ask how God did it the first time, and he's got to do it the second time. And Brother Brown said, just think how one of the same pillar of fire that brought the word to Paul is here revealing the same word he brought to Paul. <clears throat> All right. We continue. Now, see where we are being placed today. Our placing is Ephesians 1, 18 to 23. The eyes of understanding is being enlightened. So we may know the hope of his calling. Not the hope of our calling, the hope of his calling. See where that arena is? Everybody's got a calling. Lay hands on me. Prophesy a bunch of hogwash. There's no church that hasn't been sucked in by the Pentecostals. And they're all going their own way. That's dead and gone. It's concerning him. See? Not concerning you. It's concerning him. What is the hope of his calling? And what the riches of the glory? His inheritance in the saints. And you know that's his name. The only thing Jesus inherited from his father was the name. Everything else he worked for. Absolutely. That's God was his father. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? Who believe? <coughs> who believe what? In what comes forth here? That's why a message had to forerun the second coming. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead. In other words, there will be a tremendous witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as Brother Brandon said, Hebrews 13 and 8 literally means that if he's here in the form of the Holy Ghost, 
He will do exactly today in the form of the Holy Ghost what he did when he was here in flesh, which is Matthew 12, and he did it. He said positively there's no such thing as a healing revival, a genuine revival, without a new message. Amen. And I want to challenge the people that preach Brother Branham in this message and show me where we're off the Word of God, and I want to see where they're on it. Because the majority are still back in Pentecost rooting for it. <clears throat> Brother, sister, you've got to get shook of that stuff. Now listen. Thus we see that Ephesians 1, 13 to 14 culminates. Now it doesn't finish it. It culminates. It becomes the great and tremendous thing that the baptizer who was baptizing is now here himself. That's the present. I can't understand anybody sitting under Brother Branham and hearing these tapes of Brother Branham and reading the books cannot possibly understand the fact that somebody came down. Amen. And that was the baptizer himself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, it culminates. In other words, the whole peak of it is to bring the church to this place. And the baptism with the Holy Ghost has done it measure upon measure, word upon word, until under the restored word, seven thunders and the seventh seal, you have the perfectly revealed word of God. As Brother Branham said, that which is perfect has come. And he said, who is perfect but God, and what is God but the word? And by his grace, we believe we have the perfect revelation of his word for the hour. Amen. We stand right there. And that brings the debt out of the ground, <clears throat> and that puts us all into rapture, and that puts us to the place where Christ can begin to be exalted by Almighty God and take his rightful place as the great ruler. And he'll come back with us in the millennium. All right, now let's watch him in, 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 in chapter 2, 1 to 6. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, and Paul was with him, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, just sucked in, according to the prince of the power of the air, he's running it all, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, who won't listen to God, among whom also we had our behavior in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of even as others. <clears throat> now, that's that nature that I believe Brother Branham calls soul. That old soul that you've got to get rid of. Now, I don't believe in the two-soul doctrine. I'm sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. Amen. And I saw where it went. Amen. When Jones can get in the pulpit and preach polygamy, when Brother Brown has said, according to Timothy, he said, the, those elders, the ministry said, cannot have more than one wife, and that is polygamy. And he's preaching as a minister trying to do something. The man is a fraud and a phony. Amen. And I still think maybe one day I'll go to the attorney general and just spill my guts as to what's going on in this message. Because I will not be... I'll not tolerate myself to be named with men like that. Yeah. And I'm not here as a virtuous man. Don't take that. I'm not kidding you for one minute. I can come down and cut your head off with anything else. I'm not a virtuous person. But I'll tell you something. That's too much. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. Get out with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Don't name the name of Jesus Christ and William Brandon, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned. Read the papers full of Bobby Woodruff now. They picked him up for bigamy and everything else. See? All right. Dead. But they got to get rid of that old nature. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are we saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus. Now, <clears throat> this to me is what God did under Paul in age one, and has carried on forward for nearly the full seven church ages, as in verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Now that's been going on, and it's going on right at this very minute. <clears throat> now, which is then described in verses 8 to 18. For by grace you saved you faith, and not yourself to give to God, not a works any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, 
where us, wherefore remember that you in time past uh, were gent being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the common of Israel, strange from the common promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both one, and broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished any flesh the him, and even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make it himself between one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy thereby, and come and preach, came and preached peace to them which are far off, them which are nigh, for through him we both have access <clears throat> by one spirit unto the Father. Now, you notice that has been going on. All through these seven church ages, it just keeps on going and going and going. <clears throat> and um, they are a part of the bride, a part of the new Jerusalem. And remember, they are all looking forward to the ages which are to come. There were seven church ages, but there's ages beyond that, which is the millennium. See, <clears throat> where God is still moving. Now, but you don't get redeemed. You already have been redeemed. <clears throat> now, we go to see the culmination of what we're talking about. Now, I, let's watch carefully what I've been trying to teach you. Paul has set the pattern of New Jerusalem Bride. And he said, you are a part of it. And he identifies it by the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And the baptism with the Holy Ghost is how everybody, bar none, gets into Jesus Christ, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now he said, this baptism with the Holy Ghost serves until the resurrection. Now, just before the resurrection, there is a spirit comes into the church that is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but is the great seal and the baptizer himself. Now, for seven church ages, the elect are coming in. They're Gentiles. They're sinners. They're corrupt. Their natures were all wrong. But God is taking care of those people, bringing them into Christ, breaking down the middle wall of partition so that the Old Testament bride and the New Testament bride all become one in the New Jerusalem. Now watch what he says in verse 19. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, even of the household of God. Not and the household, but even the household of God, because that's what it is. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the all, whole building, fitly framed it, <clears throat> together, grows unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you're also built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. <clears throat> now that's what you're looking forward to. Not individuals being a habitation of a modicum of the Holy Spirit, but the whole bride being, as it were, a tabernacle for God himself to walk amongst them. Now he said, that's Old and New Testament. Now, so that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> he says, look, you people, you are a part of that bride. All through seven church ages, there is no difference between Old and New. There is no difference between the first half of the first resurrection and the second half of the first resurrection. No difference. You can go, you can die. You come up bright, there's not a bit of trouble whatsoever in anybody. Now, <clears throat> let's go and take a look at Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and see what we're looking at. Now, we read here 5 to 32, 25 to 30. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So I meant to love their wives, your own bodies. He that loves his wife, love with himself. That's concerning God. Now, not concerning our flesh. We're not going to talk about our flesh. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord of the church. Now, what was the flesh of Jesus Christ? It was dirt, just like yours and mine. <clears throat> Why do you think then he could, he could, could then he cast the earth off? He had to redeem the earth because he loved the earth just like himself. <coughs> See, here you're seeing redemption worked out by God, and this is his plan. That the lion 
will eat straw like the ox. And a child can play with the viper. The leopard will bother nobody. There won't be one bird that's eaten by a cat. No, you won't have that at all there. <clears throat> See, now, for no man hates his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even his Lord. And I'm going to tell you, he said, I'm going to destroy them to destroy the world. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bone. Now, if he loves his creation enough to bring it back, how much more does he love his wife? There is no way that he himself would come back without her. That's a fact. That's how men ought to love their wives. <clears throat> See, that's the way Moses was. He said, if I, they can't make it, I don't want to make it. Paul said, I'm willing, he said, to die. <clears throat> Just give my place up that my brethren after the fresh can be saved. Somebody can help. <clears throat> See? Now, for this cause a man leaves father and mother. He joined his wife and become one flesh. But this is a great mystery. I speak concerning Christ and the church. And remember <clears throat> that the bride and the groom are together. And soon as there was a wedding ceremony, the young groom and the young bride lived together for one solid year and didn't do a tap of work. Had a honeymoon one year, that's barely you guys ever had. Of course, you have honeymoon all the time, you love your wife. <coughs> that they had a honeymoon. Amen. What about the millennium? Same thing. <coughs> See, getting ready for the great city. <coughs> We're all of you are together. <coughs> now, this great marriage, the sanctification, the cleansing by the word, the presentation comes as it certainly should come, categorically, after chapter 4. Let's look at chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 4, there's one body, one spirit, he's your call to one, called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, that's the Holy Ghost. One God and Father of all is above you all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. For, wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, let captivity captain gave gifts unto men. Now he's going right back to what Jesus Christ did and how he does it. You got redemption through his blood. You got the baptism of the Holy Ghost that proves you got redemption. And now he's telling you the working of it. God's own prodigal. <clears throat> what he's working out here. Here's what God's doing. Wherever he said, he sent it up on high, led captivity, captain gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what does he first descend the Lord prior to the earth? That's the one that went down. Remember the body, Jesus didn't go down. It was the man himself went down. The Son of God went down. And he that, and he that descended is also the one that ascended up far above the heavens. <clears throat> and he might feel all things <clears> that <throat> came from God to go to God. Now, when he came back as the Holy Ghost, he set the church in order. Not the baptism with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost himself. Was the church set in order at any time before Paul? No. In 19, in, in, in year 34, <clears throat> 33 and a half, 34, and to 53, when Christ dealt from Pentecost till Paul. That was the platform Brother Branham set for the church. It was not the church. <clears throat> it was the platform. Mm -hmm. And the cornerstone of the church, not the platform, was Christ. Tell me how. The Holy Ghost himself. Mm -hmm. And the cornerstone is the headstone which is the same Christ, the Holy Ghost, in a different position. The same one that starts it is the same one that ends it. Not your baptism, my brother and sister, but the baptizer. Amen. Your baptism only links you up to him. <clears throat> now, here's the church order. Under the prophet, apostle, Paul. Because the word comes to the prophet. He gave some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints. And that perfecting of the saints means that you are a saint that acted like a hate. You are a son of God that acted like a dog. That's right. Okay. God is G-O-D, and dog is... God is G-O-D, right? Capital G. And dog is D-O-G. Yeah. You get away from God, you're a dog. Act like one. 
pretty slimy bunch of birds here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, to, to bring the saints in, there's a ministry, the evangelist, by the word of God. For the edifying the body of Christ, that's to bring all the saints in, into the branch, into, into the body. Now watch, this ministry is to we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God under a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> now that's not the millennium. Mm -hmm. That's to get you to the millennium. See? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about the every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning crash, by that in wait, like to lay in wait to the sea. But holding the truth and love may grow up unto him, it, not into, but unto him, in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, that which every joint supplied, according to fetch a working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body on the edifying of self and love. Now it tells you right here, there is a five-fold ministry ordained by God. <clears throat> and the body consists of membership and joints. And the joints signify that which is joined together, which is movable, but make the complex unity. So there have been seven church ages with seven messengers and seven messages. And the measure of the Holy Ghost was given in every age until God had nothing left to give. So he came down himself. Why? Because there's nobody else to give it. <clears throat> now the last few are being called in. God has no more word. Brother Banner said, you get everything out of the seals, you've got it now, it'll put you in the rapture. You don't need a word. <clears throat> All right. Now, what I have just brought to you, as I see it, is simply this. New Jerusalem Bride was identified by Paul in his day, and it is again being identified today. Want to turn over? <clears throat> now, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 4. What did God you bear with me in a little in my folly? And indeed, bear with me. I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. I've espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You know why he says, bear with me in that folly? He said, I am the one that's inducting you into Christ by way of the revealed word of God. And I will introduce you to Christ. And get, why, well, you dumb jerk. You take that honor on yourself? Oh. Who do you think you are? Well, he said, maybe I'm a little bit screwed up. Am I thinking? I'm, I'm wacko. Bear with me. You think of that? That's exactly what he's saying. He said, you think you think I'm all messed up here? Bear with me. I'm going to tell you something. I'm jealous over the godly jealousy. Because he said, look, under the law of jealousy, I know without being able to lay my finger on it, I sense in the spirit you're already messed up the way he was. Somebody's got to you. I want to present you as a chaste person, but I fear, lest by any means as a serpent beguile ye through his subtility, so your mind should be taken over by Satan, corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Now, I'm telling you right here what happened to Eve, what she did as an act <clears throat> of adultery was not the big thing. They would have come to it anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. It was being seduced in the mind. <clears throat> and when that did it, the whole thing was thrown off. That's why the battle of the mind is so tremendous. Now watch, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Now you got a different Jesus. But we have not preached. What did he preach? Jehovah the Old Testament, Jesus the New, Hebrews 13. Mm -hmm. Or if you receive another spirit. <clears throat> what spirit? Well, they got that all messed up. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of me. Well, then that's God and His Spirit. Hogwash. God Himself knew. Mm -hmm. Another Spirit. Mm -hmm. They're all messed up in Or another gospel, which you have not received, me accepted. <clears throat> you might well bear with Him and so on. Now, with that, I'm not going to read 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 16, because we've already read a part of it. Now, Paul identified the bride of that day, <coughs> knowing that already they were slipping away. And there soon would be <clears throat> the perversion amongst them, which perversion had already started. 
Now, let's go to the book of Revelation. We love to go there. To chapter 22, verses 10 to 15. We almost have them memorized. <clears throat> Revelation 10 and 4 says, seal the book. Revelation 22 and 10 says, don't you dare seal it. So between Revelation 10 and 4 and Revelation 22 and 10, the book becomes unsealed. Amen. That's only natural, I know that. Seal not the sayings of prophecy's book, for the time is at hand. In other words, the thunder is a thunder. <clears throat> That's right. Mm -hmm. He that is unjust, let <laughs> him be unjust still. He that is filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous. He is holy, he's holy still. Now watch, at this time, I am coming quickly. So therefore, the spirit of Ephesians 1 and 17 <coughs> is already here, and he is the one that opened the book of Revelation 22 and 10. <coughs> See? And Luke... 17, beg your pardon, 24, Matthew 24, where one taken and one left is the word dividing the tares and the wheat that is taking place. Mm -hmm. Behold, I come quickly, my reward is with you. Give man according to his word to be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. Now, the very one then that opened, gave us the gospel, is here closing the gospel. And he closes it by opening the sealed part of it. <clears throat> because there's a sealed part of it. <clears throat> Blessed are they that wash their robes, that they may have their rights to the tree of life, and have entered into the gates of the city. Now, what's the washing of the robe? It's in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, whereby the washing of the water of the word, the bride, is now all glorious within and without. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at that bride a little further. I want to go back to Romans 8 chapter because I thought of it a while ago and then I didn't bring it when I thought of it. In Romans 8 chapter, it says here, verse 10, of Christ being you, the body is dead because of sin. It is appointed unto man wants to die in that after that the judgment. But notice in verse 10, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. In other words, you're going to die, but you've got the promise you're going to come back. And the Bible said it's appointed to man, he's got to die. But there's going to be a people who don't die. <clears throat> so therefore, they come to the peak of righteousness. <clears throat> See? Yeah. Everything is thoroughly qualified in them, and there is no way they can be judged and go down. And Brother Branham said, this bride will not fail. <clears throat> We're looking to it. Now, with Revelation 22... Where we read it to verse 15. For without her dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murders and idolaters, who's ever in love with the make of the lie, we have with it verses 16 to 20. I, Jesus, sent my name to testify to you things in churches. I'm the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star, the spirit of the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that's a thirst come. And whosoever let him come and take the water of life freely. Now, what bride is doing that? It's a bride to whom the seals were open in verse 10 that knows that she is righteous and she understands the Alpha and Omega. Amen. She knows that the tree of life is there to be partaken of. <clears throat> now follow that statement carefully because I'm going to bring you back to what I said to Brother Branham here. She knows she's in the presence of the tree of life. <clears throat> Perennial youth. Not something now that you die to get. It is something you get and you don't die. <clears throat> and at that time, everything else is going to die. And it's a terrible multitude. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Give the thirst come. Whosoever will let him take the water of life free, he's still open to come. For I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. That's understands them. And that's only after Revelation 22 and 10, not before. See? If any man shall add to the things that William Branham, prophet of God, says God will add the plates written in this book. And if any man take away from the words that have been given to us by, by, by the manifested and vindicated prophet of God, God will take his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and out of the things that are written in this book. <clears throat> you know, 
verse right there, the holy city is lined with the tree of life because the tree of life is in the holy city. And, the, and that same one, that magnificent architect, God himself is down here right now. And he is that tree of life. All right. <clears throat> now, but, and, uh, and he that testified these things, that surely I come quickly, amen, even so come Lord Jesus. Now, but was so, what was so identified <clears throat> outside of the beginning of age one and the closing of age seven. In other words, there was identification in age one and there's identification now in age <clears throat> number seven. So what is Paul teaching? Return to Ephesians 1 and take up chapter 3. <clears throat> We're going to get you where I want to get you. Don't worry. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, read the full 21 verses, prisoner for the Gentiles, if you have heard the dispensation of grace of God which is given to me to you, word, how the revelation he made known unto me the mysteries I wrote in a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now made known under his holy prophets and, and apostles and prophets by the Spirit. It was known, but not like it's known now. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partake of the promise in Christ by the God. In other words, there's a New Testament bride and there's an Old Testament bride, and they're one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's New Jerusalem. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual work of the power. In other words, I came manifested and vindicated to you I was that messenger. Unto me, whom less than all the saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Unto me, he said, well, I was vindicated, unworthy, to bring an absolute charge by the Holy Ghost word that cannot fail. Now watch. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now watch that word creation because it has to do, at the end time, with recreation. <laughs> you know, we're looking at it very pretty soon. <clears throat> to the intent that now, under the principalities and powers in heaven faces, it might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, God's great wisdom plan is going to be in the church and in no place else. Now, what is a great plan? New Jerusalem. What are you waiting for? New Jerusalem. What is this message all about? New Jerusalem. Now, it's got to relate to us. You understand? Paul identified a bride. <coughs> New Jerusalem. At the end time, there is another identified bride. Where is her identification? The right Jesus. The right spirit. The right word. Separate those three in any way, shape, and form, you're gone. If you get all three messed up, where are you gone now? Yeah. Complete apostasy. <clears throat> See, because God is complete in threes. Mm -hmm. Now, the church is going to display it according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Now, Paul is speaking of himself, that his confidence is his accessibility to God and God's accessibility to him. William Branham could go to God, the same as Paul could, as any prophet could, and get the answer. And <clears throat> bring him back for the bride. Yeah. Hey? Praise the Lord. And with confidence. Yeah. I keep telling you about the theorem, the vindication theorem principle. Why do you think Brother Branham had what he had? The vindication theorem. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to prove something that's already proved. It's asinine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the thing to do is come to the place of the rest of faith. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not in my tribulation for you, which is, it is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. All right. Where was the Old Testament saints before Jesus was born? They were the family of God before Jesus ever struck this earth. Jesus was the Son of God. And he was a tabernacle that God came and actually lived in. 
And we're going to, and that, that body, as Brother Branham says, was a part of the earth. That's right, we're part of this earth. Say what you want. And he redeemed it. Shed the blood. And the blood on the earth redeems the earth. And there's a bride coming back, a physical bride coming back, recreated from the same cleaned up elements. Because Brother Banner said he'll create again from the potash, the cosmic light, and so on. <clears throat> All cleaned up. New people entirely going to come back here. And it's the whole family showing once more that Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old Testament. Okay. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in a man. That you may dwell in that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. That you, being rooted and ground love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be, might be filled with all the fullness of God. <clears throat> in other words, every single thing that God wants for you, you're going to have. He's praying to that end. Now, unto him that's able to do exceeding above all we can ask or think according to the power that we're us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. <clears throat> now, that's 21 verses. The key here is created or brought forth. Now, let's look at that again. Nine. To make known, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things in Christ. Now, the all things in Christ have to be people. And Brother Branham said that it was the all, th all things are you and me. Because dogs don't get into Christ. <clears throat> They're beneficiaries. They have to wait their turn to come back. They're waiting for us. <clears throat> so we see the picture. The key for, is verse number nine. Created or brought forth into physical man. The true desired thoughts that were within God. God deliberately brought forth in a creation which was his own bride all his desired thoughts which were in it. Attributes manifested. And in verse 21 shows where it heads up world without end. When do you get a world without end? When it's recreated. <clears throat> now you follow what I'm saying? Yes, and we're looking at it. I'll try to help you as we go down the road. Now, world without end. Where does it start? Word without end starts right over here in 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead, become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came resurrection also. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall lay. Now notice, as, as in Adam all die, every single Adamic son, <clears throat> every child of God brought forth by natural election, based upon supernatural election, have to come out of Adam. They don't come out of the serpent. Right. <clears throat> We've got a mix up. But he's not going to lose any. Now, he says here, as they all died in Adam, in sin, came forth sinners, even so, all in Christ will be made alive. Everyone then in the bride is guaranteed positively a baptism with the Holy Ghost, and those that come up as foolish virgin, it says they go into eternal life, proving the Holy Ghost there for them also. <clears throat> as far as I can see that, anyway. Now let's keep reading. But every man in his own order, Christ the first roots, afterward they that are Christ in his perusia, his present. Then cometh the end. <clears throat> now watch. Like every single prophet, he will drive you crazy. To drive you plumb nuts. Because he will not be chronological. <clears throat> he suddenly says, look, get this far. You look right to New Jerusalem. Now that's the spirit that Brother Brandon preaches in, and that's the spirit I'm trying to get myself in and you people in, because he said, always looking back, always looking forward. Nobody knows what's going on. And I say, true, Brother Brandon, but by the grace of God, we're going to be different. Because somebody's got to know what's going on. Uh, that's prophetic utterance with Brother Branham gave. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall, when God the Father hath put down all rule and all authority and power. 
For God has started to reign right now as the capstone and the head of his church. And he's going to do it till the very last enemy is put down. And he will do it in a pillar of fire or he will do it in the body of his son. But there will come a time, the New Jerusalem, at the top of the pyramid. And the throne will be sitting there and God will leave the lamb on the throne and he'll be the pillar of fire above the throne. Now you can say what you want, but you know that is what the prophet taught. Amen. <clears throat> then at that time when the kingdom is handed back to the father, the father becomes all and in all. And before they call, he answers. And the bullock eats straw with the lion. <clears throat> and nothing shall hurt or harm in my holy mouth. And be nothing outside anymore. That's whoremongers or anything else because you're all burned up. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what you understand is this. It is going on now. Mm -hmm. I'm not finished. Just get the picture. It has started. It has started. It didn't start before. Right. Yeah. It was in the works. In the process. <clears throat> in the blueprint. It didn't start before. For he hath put all things under his feet. He tells you that was already done potentially through Calvary and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But when he says all things are put under him and is manifest, that he is left up which to put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son himself be subject unto him that put all things under the Son, that God may be all in all. <clears throat> in other words, then he says, else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? He tells you right now this has to do with the resurrection. What is the resurrection all about? It is new truth. What is new truth all about? It is a great plan of Almighty God. And then some people say there's no resurrection. A bunch of disembodied spirits born around. They're crazier than a hoot owl. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got this same bunch of stupid people right today. They said there's no resurrection. They say, believe Brother Brown is messy. And no resurrection. Like that Ninkum Poop out in California. He fell for 70 Adventism. When Brother Brown and Categorically said they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you better perk your ears up. I said a little while ago, I'll say it again. Brother Brown said there's no such thing as a true healing revival unless there's a dynamically new change message. Have you got some old crummy thoughts in your heads today? You better get rid of them. <clears throat> don't speculate. See, don't speculate. This is legislated already. <clears throat> See, why stand we in jeopardy? It's very hour and so on. Then he goes on down here. <clears throat> and uh, how far do I want to read? Well, I could read quite a bit. <clears throat> let's take 35. <clears throat> oh, let's go, let's read a little further up here. He said, look, he said, look what I went through for you people. Then he said, be not deceived, evil communication, corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Look it up there like Cain. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. See? But some will say, how are the dead raised up? With what body they come? Thou fool, except thou sowest. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which you sow, you sow not that body that shall be but a bare grain. In other words, look here. You don't, you don't, when you, this body goes down the dust, you don't plant a body <clears throat> as though it's going to come up that, that you have. To, you don't plant bodies. <clears throat> you plant a seed which is a light. And under the right conditions in the dirt, that light will manifest in a fresh plant. <clears throat> now he said you plant a seed. Now, what seed are you and I planting? His seed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's all. The spirit that God allowed us is gone. Who cares where it went? I care less. But well, it's a soul that gene to God. <clears throat> now, if it's an oat seed, it'll come up oats. If it's a wheat seed, come up wheat. If a child of God's seed, it'll come up glorified. He tells you. Now, look what's all going to come up. There are different kinds of flesh. But God gives a body according to seed. Seed of a dog brings up a dog. Seed of a cow brings up a cow. <clears throat> now watch. All flesh is not the same flesh. And it's going to come back. There's one of beasts. There's one of fishes. There's one of birds. They're celestial bodies. They're going to burn and come back. Terrestrial bodies. They're going to burn and come back. They all got their own glory. They all got their own place. All got their own status. The Bible said so. So was the resurrection of the dead. Sown in corruption, raised in corruption. Sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown in weakness, raised in power. Sown in natural body, raised in spiritual body. Sown in, there's a natural, there's a spiritual. 
As is written, the first man, first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam made a quick mean spirit. How be that which is not which is first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. <clears throat> well, you got a natural body for a spiritual inside. Next time you get a spiritual body to match the spirit. <clears throat> we don't have our right true body. <clears throat> We're gonna get them. And the seed will bring forth its kind. And if the kind is Christ, it's going to bring forth the Jesus Christ body. Now look at in verse 51. I'm going to show you mystery. We're all going to get a change. We're all not going to die. In other words, the seed in us <clears throat> will, by the divine power of God, change our atoms into the atoms of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, this then will make up the entire New Testament bride, the second half of New Jerusalem, as noted by Paul in Ephesians, the third chapter and six, where he talks about that. The middle wall of partition being broken down, the Gentiles and the, and, the, and the Jews being one, and the Galatians, they're neither bond nor free, Jew nor Greek, and so on, the body of Christ. <clears throat> they are staying right here on earth. The kingdom has come. God's will is done. After bridal completion and redemption comes the millennium, where all Old and New Testament brides live rural lives, which in turn, in New Jerusalem, evolves into a type of, ur of urban life with all the rural benefits. <clears throat> right. Be just everything a paradise. <clears throat> now listen carefully and don't miss this. We are Zion, or somebody is. Our identification is neither church nor saint. It is bride. And it is bride that is Zion. New Jerusalem. I saw the bride coming down, adorned, the city coming down as a bride adorned for her husband. <clears throat> what was the bride adorned her husband? She had on the vestures of virginity. <clears throat> Never been touched by a man. Man-made creeds and dogmas are gone. And the bride is Zion. And as, now listen, and as our literal soul was in God, as an attribute, and waited for that life to come through proper processes to become flesh in its proper hour. That's election, spiritual, natural. Mm -hmm. Even so, identical man, are we now waiting our further manifestation or clothing, which is Zion, where it will be seen that we are <coughs> declared as God said to the Apostle John. <clears throat> Revelation 1 and 6. And here we are. Here is our true vocation in the New Jerusalem. And half, listen, let's read verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace unto you and peace, that's Asia Minor, from him which is and was which is to come, and which, that's a, Hebrews 13, 8, and from the seven spirits before the throne, that's the portion of the spirit and the word for every, every church age, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful martyr, the witness, and the first begotten from amongst the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and by the baptism with the Holy Ghost, putting us in there according to his plan, hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory to him forever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And then we go to 1 Peter. <coughs> 1 Peter, the second chapter, 5 and 9. You'll find I've taken you a long, 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 long way around to tell you what I'm going to tell you, but I have to do it according to what I feel. <coughs> to catch the spirit of what I'm talking about, what Brother Branham talked about. And I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. Peter, the second chapter, first Peter, and verses 5 and 9, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And remember, this is the same light that fell <clears throat> at the beginning has fallen now. Now what are we looking at here? We are looking at the fact <clears throat> that Brother Brano said New Jerusalem is in the makings 
to come down as though the thousand years were nothing. You're looking at it right now, passing from shadow to substance. It's right upon us. We are not looking down the road anymore for it. We are here meeting it. And it is here meeting us. And the great ultimate of this great holy city is a God in the form of Pyrrhus and the Lamb on the throne at the top and a royal priesthood of kings. That's Melchizedek. We saw it right now in the end time. You can never understand till now because it was only when he tore the seals off the book and handed it back to the Father could he come down and open redemption for everything which would culminate in the great worship of Almighty God where there is no temple for the Lamb is, and the God is the temple and <clears throat> the glory of God and the Lamb are the light thereof. Now, these are kings and priests. <clears throat> okay. With this understanding, paragraph 272. <clears throat> now, we're going to finish. The leaves will be for the healing of the nations. That is the kings that live in there, bringing their honor in. When they bring their honor in and lay it before the throne of God, just like outside the where the 11 tribes would bring the tithe to the Levites, and they live thereby, in other words, ministering back to God through that way. When they bring their honor into that blessed land, and then they'll reach for the tree of life, reach forth to it, like Adam couldn't do, mm -hmm. and do what? break off the leaf of the tree of life and they'll walk out together. There's no more war. Everything's at peace. The leaves are a memorial <clears throat> for the healing of the nation. And it's not a physical healing. It is a spiritual healing. Now, he says that tree of life reminds him continually <clears throat> of his youth. It is going on. <clears throat> Let's go back now to Revelation 22 again. Tenth verse, the opening of the seals. <clears throat> the time is at hand. The righteous and the wicked have been separated. He's on the verge of coming down. So therefore, this is Acts, the third chapter. <clears throat> See? <clears throat> when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of God, the great healing revival, at that time, he will hold Jesus the Christ from coming down here until the complete restoration has been gone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, you're looking at it right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's going on right now. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. To give every man according to his work should be. Now, there you are. Just, Rick, that's that's uh, Matthew. Fan is in his hand. 30 purges floor. That's, that's Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 20, the whole bit. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. He tells you what I did at the beginning. I always have done. I'll always do what's at the beginning. I'll do at the last. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in other words, we came from God in a, as a plan, as an understanding, as what was in that spirit to unfold and bring forth. Now, that same spirit in us, by the germ of the soul, has unfolded by the grace of God and bringing forth. Now, what at this time? Blessed are they that wash their robes. Yes. Ephesians 5. That they may have the right to the tree of life. Hallelujah. That you see your youth now in Christ and this message. And that is the great healing. Yes. That there will be people, young people especially, I don't claim to, but I have, don't ever promise to die. I wish I did. <clears throat> I just may die, which is very nice. Because I'm a softie. I don't like suffering. And I sure don't want to have some kind of a sponge or something. Or carried around here and there. I sure wouldn't want that. Of course, as long as the mind is clear, it's not quite so bad. I don't preach in my arm, I preach in my mind. <clears throat> but you see, right here now at this time, you are looking at what these kings are looking at. See? The source of all life and youth, which means now is the hour of eternal youth. That poor mentally deficient sister out there that married this guy Jaggers. I think her name's Evelyn. 
And she anoints people with the oil of the youth. And you won't get old. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's like Shiva Tawari saying, to you, if you die, prove John Bright. Poor old Doc, he believed that for a while. He found himself dying of cancer. His son-in-law said, well, Doc, what about it now? He said, he made a mistake. We haven't got time to make a mistake, brother. Said. I want you to see it, Brother Brown was seen. That tree is here and now in the form of the Holy Ghost, the source of all life. And the healing is not a physical, it is a moral, a spiritual healing above all else. <clears throat> and it says here <clears throat> what they were doing. <clears throat> they were greeting each other with the leaf from the tree of life signifying peace. Now, <clears throat> we've read this. All right, listen. Today, we are the only living semi-shadow or semi-reality on this earth of New Jerusalem. Right. What am I trying to say? Brother Ben said, here's my hand. I go to the wall. You can't see it very good. The lights are poor. And he said, that might look like anything way back here. But the closer you get, the more it looks like a hand mm -hmm. until it becomes a hand. Now, here we are just this far, as it were, <clears throat> from the reality. Mm -hmm. All right. We are in a place of semi-reality of the New Jerusalem. Let's take a look at it in 2 Corinthians. How much time we got? Enough time? About five, six minutes? Seven. <clears throat> All right. We've got just enough time to finish this. Okay. 2 Corinthians 3. And it tells you about the mind being veiled with creeds and dogmas and a wrong revelation. But at the end time, watch, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's jubilee. You're going to get your minds liberated. <clears throat> because the mind was taken in bondage to Eve. And she seduced Adam. Then the mind again was taken in bondage. But this time, the mind will not be taken in bondage. See? We all, with open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. That's God's own perfect assessment of the whole thing and what God intended to do and what he is doing, which will culminate getting us over there. And it's starting already because it's just set in. <clears throat> we all, with these veils off of our mind, our faces are no longer cluttered. No more, there's no mark of the beast up there. No other name up there. See? We are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, the Spirit of God now is in position, God himself being there, and God has to be there for a resurrection. God in spirit. He is present now to raise the dead and to bring the saints immortality. And it says, therefore, seeing we, Paul says, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we don't faint. <clears throat> now, he did not faint. William Branham did not faint. And it's bringing forth a race of people who don't faint. They don't say, where is the promise of his coming? <clears throat> he's supposed to be here. What's he doing? What's going I'm telling you now what is going on. So don't look for a lot of hogwash and a lot of your own ideas. You can't listen. You can't listen to me and me trying to be here to help you. If you've got your own ideas, go someplace else. Go start your own church. You know you should come in here. I can't help you. You're just giving your time and going and spend it on something. Do what you want. But don't, don't fool with me because I'm not fooling with you. I'm trying to tell you because I'm living by this and trusting God that this is going to see me through. And I believe it's going to see you too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, but know that Paul, we have renounced the hidden things, the dishonesty, the lie. Not walking in crackers. Not hanging the word of God deceitfully. Manifested by God, he was a true prophet. But by manifest nature, commending ourselves to a man in the conscience <clears throat> in the sight of already God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, here's what you see. We are the only living semi-shadow or semi-reality of this earth, of the New Jerusalem, on earth. It's the only one ever got there. And thus we are to believe and conduct ourselves as those kings. Now watch, here's where I'm getting my pastoral punch. Walk to the tree of life 
and take part of that word which is for this hour. <clears throat> to be the healing word to repair all the breaches. For years I have preached. This word is going to do it all or nothing will do it. Right. Now, that to me is going to the tree of life that's here to receive the word of God. To bring a peace amongst us as church members in this church. <clears throat> I am not worried <clears throat> about any preacher out there that disagrees with me. Sure, I'll stand up and say he's wrong. That's my business. I am worried about us. I don't care about any church anyplace else. Or who your pastor is or anybody else. Stick with them. I am worried about us. Are we daily walking as the kings and priests of God in the literal shadow of the reality of New Jerusalem, which is fast losing its shadow, that we can look each other in the eye and be like these kings. And I believe soon as one king saw another king come down the avenue, he ran quickly to the tree of life and pulled the leaf off to make sure there was nothing between the two of them. You know why? Because they got there by one word, which is from God, which is God's desired and revealed plan. We have to believe we are that. And we have to believe no matter what takes place, that the greatest thing in all the world is having this new Jerusalem peace and commitment I know it's easy. Well, I, I like Brother Bale. I don't agree how the church is run. I don't like a house run either. Can you do a better job? I'm not hitting at anybody or throwing the thing out. I'm just saying, look, all this nonsense has got to go. It's got to go for me. It's got to go for you. I don't know when. And I don't know what wire, what strong word God is going to print. It's like some lie solution or something. But he's got to do it. You'll notice the king's hat. Now watch. You'll notice. You got enough time of this? <clears throat> Two minutes. Good. I'll read it. You will notice that the kings had it in themselves. That is in their very essential nature to want peace with all others. And they therefore proffered it. And those to whom it is extended or was extended have it in their essential nature to receive it. I would easily believe that every time a king saw another king coming down the avenue, he would run to, the, to be the first to get the leave and present it to his brother, fulfilling the very life of Christ when he was here on earth who told us to fall at peace with all men, and you can read it in Ephesians 2, 14, 15, 17, Romans 16, 20. The word of this hour, he calls this part of Zion to a complete reconciliation within herself and with peace, not the emotional type of New York where they all got blubbering and kissing and repenting and then right into a false doctrine. And another church, the polygamy, oh, they blubbered and they slobbered each other and all oh, was a great big to-do and they went into polygamy. I'm not talking about that nonsense. I'm talking about eternity. Immortality. You can have your blubber, your slobbing, and your kissing any time you want and call it making up. Let me tell you, this is the word of God. Amen. Not some junk that you may think is the word of God and you get out of your soul, which is a little bit too corrupt. For your liking and my liking and mine's the same way. But to begin to see this word and identify with it and realize there must be that nature that comes out of it. Kill all other natures and have this peace and sweetness, the love of Christ. I'm not saying you don't have it. I'm just telling you that's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And that's what the prophet said. And he said, you love each other now, sweet and nice. But he said, you wait till I'm gone. Right. You watch Satan to me. Amen. And that's Satan's trick every time, brother. Satan. <clears throat> Let us have a real peace and honesty. Let us begin properly. And don't sit back and say, well, I'm looking what people are going to do. You'll sit back and go to hell looking what people's going to do. Right. Amen. You get the leaf out. Amen. You take the tree of life. You take the word. Amen. And you offer peace to me. Amen. I gotta do it. You gotta do it. I'm not mad to anybody. I studied this thoroughly. I spent hours on this. When I get in a certain frame and mood, I know just where I'm going. And I know I'm teaching you the truth this morning. As I stand here, I defy contradiction to anybody. I can look you all in the eye. I'm afraid of none of you all you put together. I know what I'm talking about. This is what the spirit of the prophet was and is for us, and he had it. There wasn't one man could come against him at any time at all, and he said, oh, you could right, back right off, knowing all the time he was right. Spirit of humility. Little child should eat him. What's a little child? Some kid with a lot of brains, a little Marjo that turns into a devil on four wheels, some David Walker messes with me with the rest of them. At least that's the record. 
Just let him admit it. Don't worry about the tape. Little child simply means one thing. That child, to lead them, is under the leadership of somebody else. He hasn't got a mind of his own. So you and I can't have minds of our own. But we can begin to see that this, what he's talking about, is the city of peace. And we are a city of peace. And we are a church of peace. Under every consideration to proffer and extend the symbol of peace, which is a word from the tree of life. Take your Bible and search it through, and you'll see just page after page. And you'll see with me, my brother and my sister, there is a way that we can go. Now, God help us to go there. I don't claim to hand it. I've got to fight. You've got to fight. But this is what he was talking about. And this is what we're looking at. So may the Lord bless you. I appreciate you as the people who understand and do these things. I'm not saying you don't do them. But I'm just saying, listen, we are New Jerusalem. And that is what they do up there. And if we have found out what they do up there and do it down here, could you possibly be wrong? Where could you make an error? If God was so particular to see that Moses got everything according to the heavenly pattern, and now the pattern is laid out for you and me, and the great thing in the world is what Brother Brandon taught us, that reconciliation, that real peace of God. I'm human, you're human. We'll always be human. We can be apes. We won't be. We're going to be humans. A part of humanity. Right? So here we're already down here in the prophet hand. Brother, sister, listen. He said only your geography changes. You don't change. A heavenly city is going to have heavenly people. Well, they were born to the earth, but they're going to get up there. The new to glory, let's rise and be just good. Lord bless you. Heavenly Father, we look to you now to help us in what we preach today. Tracing the whole thing right through, O oh God, from the beginning to the end. From the thought to the culmination, which was you had in there. A whole city of priests and kings unto God. And everyone bringing their glory into you, because that's where they got in the first place, giving back to you what you gave to them. And every single one proffering to each other peace, proffering the healing, proffering the oneness. How, Lord, can a family have anything but rifts and trouble if his husband and wife pull apart or the children pull apart? We see every single place. We can look in the history book. We can look in your word. We can look anywhere. And always it's the same story. Always the same one. People go around with their fists raised and their egos mounted on a pistol or a sword. When my God, the ego, should be mounted on peace, peace, peace like a river flowing. Peace in every home, throughout the land. The prophet said, when will peace come? It'll come when the son of peace, the son of righteousness comes. Well, Lord, if, if you haven't come, then what's this been all about? Because the prophet said, my message is to declare that you're here. Showed us New Jerusalem. Showed us the shadow giving way to substance. Just like the Apostle Paul, leaping thousands of years, if necessary, in one breath. And the prophet William Brown, leaping a thousand years. Just like all the other prophets. Because we know time's all but passed away. It's just, it's running out. This age is running out. Millennium's coming up. And New Jerusalem. Father, I'm not as conscious as I should be. I admit to it. I could be one of these people preaching the Word of God, 100% revelation. And I myself be a castaway, castigated. Maybe I'll be one Lord like you said, don't have love. I have all knowledge and don't have any love. <clears throat> I don't know what I got or don't have when it comes down to me, Lord. I'm not able to know these things. I got no vindication. But Lord, I do believe that what I'm saying is the truth. And I can stand with Brother Bram and say, if we're not bright, there's a bride out there somewhere. May it help us also to stay with Brother Brown and me, Brother, for not pride, but by the grace of God, we won't get in anybody's way. That means offering peace, offering the word of light, offering each other the truth, talking back and forth the good things of God. 
until the homes are saturated, the lives are saturated, and the church becomes one. And we thank you for it this morning, Lord, because we believe you've got to start in this church here. We believe, we, we believe it's here, Lord God. We believe this is what we've stood for, and because we stand for, Lord, we believe you'll stand with us and for us. And Father, where we're, where we're not doing some things that we should be doing, I, I know we hate to give up the things we're doing because we're pretty hog satisfied with these things. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to break anything off that should be broken off and to learn real satisfaction is, to learn where the real things lie. That they don't lie in a lot of things that we think, but they lie, Lord, in that word, which essentially is by your own prophet's mouth, a part of us, and we derive from it to the extent we will manifest it. Oh God, that being our true nature, pour the sulfuric acid and the fire upon the old nature, that it might be completely burnt out, O oh living God. No matter what it is, to get out of our hearts, minds, and lives and be in this lovely position. Father, I thank you for the truth today, for your love, your kindness, the sweetness and goodness of your people here. They're so generous and so beautiful in what they do, how they conduct themselves. We appreciate it so much. But Father, every one of us wants to go on and on, anxious, for the semi-reality to just give one last sigh and pass to the full reality. Yes. We know that's in your hands, Lord. And we know we can't just make it come tomorrow morning. But we can have such a wonderful hope of it, Lord, that what does it matter when it comes? We're part of it. And the shadow is giving way to more and more light. And we're more and more identified. Help us to know that, Lord. That's a big thing. That's a that's what we're all crying for. Lord. Make sure up there crying and weeping. And we inside, Lord, crying and weeping for it, oh God. And here it is right here. Father, just you know our hearts. What can I say in my prayer? You know my heart's better than heart better than I do. And I also know, Lord, the Holy Spirit can pray better than I can pray. So I pray, blessed Holy Spirit, in me, that you'll pray for the people here. Right through as a great intercessor to bring us all into the reality of priests and kings, men and women authority, authority over their own lives through the power of Jesus Christ, taking that word and offering peace and harmony, and love and joy, a little bit of New Jerusalem here on earth, and under which we'll ascribe the honor and the glory, because we ask it and we love it. In Jesus' name, amen. You love the Lord this morning?